So Lucy, I was reading this fascinating research about bilingual brains. And for everyone listening, this is actually perfect for you. We're talking about how learning a second language literally boosts your intelligence. How cool is that? Hi, everyone. Yeah, we're back. And Gian, this is so relevant. I mean, everyone listening is basically getting smarter just by tuning in. Right? That's what I thought. The research is pretty mind-blowing, actually. They've found that people who speak two languages have better memory, better attention spans, and they're better at problem-solving. So when people say, I can't learn languages, I'm not good at them, are they selling themselves short? Ha! Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, all that torture was worth it. Your brain was literally rewiring itself. They've done brain scans and found that bilingual people have more gray matter in certain areas. Gray matter? That sounds very sci-fi. What does that even mean? So gray matter is basically where most of your brain's neurons are. The processing power. If you think of your brain like a computer, more gray matter means better cognitive function. Oh, I see what you mean. So it's like upgrading your brain's hardware just by learning another language? Exactly. And here's the really interesting part. When you're bilingual, your brain is constantly switching between languages, even when you're not aware of it. That constant switching is like a workout for your executive function. Executive function? That sounds so corporate. Like my brain is wearing a tiny suit and making business decisions. You know what? That's actually not a bad analogy. Executive function is basically your brain's CEO. It manages attention, planning, problem solving, all the high level stuff. Right. And when you say high level stuff, you mean like when I'm trying to remember where I put my keys while also thinking about what to make for dinner. Yeah, exactly that. And bilingual people are better at that kind of multitasking because their brains are used to juggling different language systems simultaneously. That actually makes so much sense. My grandmother speaks three languages and she's sharp as anything at 85. She never forgets a birthday, never misses a detail. That's the other amazing thing. Bilingualism seems to protect against cognitive decline. Studies show it can delay dementia by several years. Several years? That's huge. So basically, everyone listening right now is investing in their future brain health. Absolutely. Every time you struggle with English pronunciation or try to understand an idiom, you're building cognitive reserve. It's like putting money in a brain bank. Brain bank! I love that. Though I have to say, when I was learning It's Raining Cats and Dogs, I thought English speakers were completely insane. Oh man, English idioms are wild. But that's another workout for your brain. Figuring out that raining cats and dogs means heavy rain, not actual animals falling from the sky. Right. And that kind of abstract thinking, connecting weird phrases to their actual meanings, that's exactly what builds cognitive flexibility. Yeah, cognitive flexibility is basically your ability to shift between different concepts or adapt to new situations. And bilinguals are masters at this because they're constantly shifting between language rules. So when I accidentally mix Spanish and English in one sentence, which happens all the time, my brain is actually doing something impressive? It really is. That code switching, as they call it, requires incredible neural coordination. Your brain has to suppress one language while activating another, and sometimes they overlap. Code switching! That sounds so technical for something I do when I can't remember the English word for something. But that's the thing. Even that momentary confusion is your brain working hard. The research shows that the areas responsible for attention and control light up like crazy during those moments. So basically, every time I blank on a word and say, you know, the thing, the thing, my brain is having a little workout session? Pretty much. And here's something else interesting. Bilingual people are better at filtering out irrelevant information. Like, they can focus better in noisy environments. Oh, that explains why I can work in coffee shops. I always wondered why background noise doesn't bother me as much as it bothers some people. Right, exactly. You, Your brain has learned to filter and prioritize information because it's constantly doing that with languages. It's like having a really good spam filter, but for, for real life. A spam filter for life! I need to remember that one. 
But wait, does this mean monolingual people are at a disadvantage? Not necessarily a disadvantage, but they're missing out on these specific cognitive benefits. The good news is, it's never too late to start learning a language and get these benefits. That's so encouraging, especially for our listeners who might be adults learning English. Your brain is literally getting stronger with every episode. Absolutely. And the research shows that even late bilingualism, learning a second language as an adult, still provide significant cognitive benefits. You know what I find fascinating? How learning a language changes the way you think. Like, I actually think differently in Spanish than in English sometimes. That's a real phenomenon. Different languages can activate different thought patterns and even personality traits. Some people say they feel more emotional in one language, more logical in another. Yes, I'm definitely more dramatic in Spanish. Everything sounds more passionate. In English, I'm more controlled, I guess. That makes sense. And that ability to shift between different modes of thinking, that's another form of cognitive flexibility that makes bilingual brains so adaptable. So when people say, I can't learn languages, I'm not good at them, are they selling themselves short? Totally selling themselves short. The research shows that the struggle itself is what builds these cognitive benefits. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to keep trying. That's actually really motivating. Like every mistake is still making you smarter in a way. Exactly. And think about what our listeners are doing right now. They're processing English, maybe translating in their heads, making connections. Their brains are literally getting stronger as we speak. It's like a gym membership for your brain, but way more fun than actual exercise. No offense to my running hobby. Ha, uh, though actually there are similarities. Both physical exercise and language learning promote neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to form new connections. Neuroplasticity. Now that's a word that sounds impressive at parties. Oh, I'm just working on my neuroplasticity. Right, but it's true. Every new word you learn, every grammar rule you master, you're literally creating new neural pathways. So basically, our listeners' brains are under construction right now. Little neural highways being built as we chat. That's a perfect way to put it. And the more languages you know, the easier it becomes to learn additional ones because you've built this incredible neural infrastructure. Oh, so that's why people who speak three or four languages make it look so easy. They've got like a super highway system up there. Yeah, exactly. Their brains have become really efficient at pattern recognition, at spotting similarities between languages, at acquiring new sounds and structures. You know, this whole conversation is making me feel pretty good about struggling through French lessons last year, even though I still can't pronounce anything properly. But that struggle with pronunciation? That's your brain working on distinguishing and producing new sounds, which enhances your overall auditory processing abilities. Wait, so even my terrible French accent is making me smarter? This is the best news I've heard all week. Absolutely. And here's another cool thing. Bilingual kids often show better performance on creative tasks. The ability to think in multiple languages seems to boost creative problem solving. That makes so much sense. When you know multiple words for the same thing, you start seeing concepts from different angles. Right, and that mental flexibility translates into being able to approach problems in novel ways. It's like having multiple tools in your toolkit instead of just uh, a hammer. Speaking of tools, when you said toolkit just now, that's such a useful metaphor. English loves these kinds of concrete images for abstract ideas. Yeah. And understanding metaphors like that is another cognitive workout. You're connecting abstract concepts to concrete uh, images, which builds those neural connections we talked about. So every idiom, every metaphor, every weird English expression is basically a little puzzle for your brain to solve? Exactly. And solving those puzzles strengthens your cognitive muscles. It's like doing crosswords, but naturally integrated into communication. No wonder I feel mentally tired after long conversations in my second language. My brain's been doing Olympic-level gymnastics. That mental fatigue is real. It's called cognitive load. But just like physical exercise, the more you do it, 
the easier it becomes. Cognitive load. Why does every brain thing sound like a computer term? Next, you'll tell me I need to defragment my memory or something. Ha! Ah, though, honestly, sleep kind of does that. It consolidates memories and clears out mental clutter. But that's a whole other fascinating topic. Oh, we should definitely do an episode on sleep and the brain. But getting back to languages, this research must be pretty motivating for people who are on the fence about learning a second language. Absolutely. I mean, we're talking about measurable improvements in memory, attention, problem solving, creativity, and even protection against aging. That's a pretty impressive list of benefits. And it's not just about being able to order coffee in another country, though that's nice too. It's literally an investment in your cognitive health. Right. And for our listeners who are already on this journey, every episode they listen to, every new phrase they pick up, they're actively building these benefits. You know what I love about this? It means that struggling with English isn't a sign of weakness. It's a sign that your brain is doing some serious heavy lifting. That's such an important point. The difficulty is the feature, not a bug. It's supposed to be challenging because that challenge is what drives the cognitive improvements. Feature, not a bug. I love that programming reference. Very sneaky, Gian. You caught that. But yeah, I think it's a useful way to reframe language learning struggles. They're not obstacles. They're opportunities for brain growth. And honestly, knowing all this science makes me want to pick up French again. Or maybe try something completely different, like Japanese. Go for it. The research shows that each additional language provides unique cognitive benefits. Plus, learning very different languages, like going from English to Japanese, provides an even bigger cognitive workout. Because the brain has to deal with completely different writing systems, grammar structures, even ways of thinking. Exactly. It's like cross-training for your brain. Different languages exercise different cognitive muscles. Cross-training for your brain. Okay, I'm definitely stealing that phrase. It makes language learning sound so much cooler than studying. Well, it is cooler than just studying. You're literally reshaping your brain architecture, building new neural networks, enhancing your cognitive abilities. When you put it like that, our listeners are basically brain architects, designing and building better cognitive structures with every lesson. I love that. Brain architects. And the blueprint they're working from is constantly evolving as they learn more. This whole conversation has made me appreciate how incredible the human brain is. Like the fact that we can rewire ourselves just by learning new words. That's almost magical. It really is. And the best part is these benefits last a lifetime. The cognitive reserve you build through language learning stays with you. That's such a beautiful thought. Every word learned is like a tiny investment in your future self. Absolutely. So to everyone listening, keep going with your English journey. Your brain is thanking you for it, even when it feels difficult. Yes. And remember, when you mix up words or forget vocabulary, that's not failure. That's your brain doing its workout routine. Perfect way to end this. Thanks for listening, everyone. Keep building those beautiful bilingual brains, and we'll see you in the next episode. See you next time, everyone. And remember, every conversation you understand, every new expression you learn, you're literally getting smarter. How cool is that? Until next time.